Welcome, welcome to the show. This is The Process, I am Chris, and I'm so happy to see everybody here because tonight we're gonna talk main title design and we have design royalty in the house. I'm not talking about me, I'm talking about none other than Kyle Cooper. Took a lot of string pulling, rescheduling, but he's finally here. Now, if you're not familiar with Kyle Cooper's work, we're gonna watch some of his work, all right? Stick around. You can come back out. Thank you. Thank you, guys. I appreciate the support. You guys are amazing. Well, first, I want to thank you for coming out. I know you're super busy. It was a long shot that you were going to be able to make it tonight, but he's here, and I'm just glad that tonight we're ready to go. First question I want to ask you is, is it strange for you to see your own work? No. No? No. no. I've been working on titles since 1988. You forget the things that you've done. You know, I, I used to like to speak because I would show that montage and it just kind of reminds me. There's a story behind every one of those things and it's my work to varying degrees. Uh, Prologue's my second company and I ran the design department at our Greenberg in New York. It's sort of emotional to me. You know, it's sort of, this is your life. You know, this is, some of those things are 20 years old, you know. Well, that's deep, guys. It's not current, you know. I mean, I, I, we could make a current montage and marketing people will say, well, you got to put the, you know, reps, forgive me. <laughs> <laughs> reps say, you got to show the new stuff, you know, you got to get Is the... Is that what they say, <laughs> yeah. uh, No comment. You okay. need the new stuff, you know. One of your questions is. Uh, oh, you don't know the questions. I'm jumping ahead. Don't, don't jump ahead. You don't know. No, any you of the just questions. read it to We've me never five minutes ago. About the questions before this night. I saw over the corner of okay, the, okay. over your shoulder. <laughs> I know he does. No, that um, you know, like why do you, why do I work on main titles? It isn't so necessary that um, the work be fashionable. You know, it has to be appropriate to the movie, and so you're not like sometimes in broadcast you're trying to do like trendy thing or like, a, you know, network packages, you're trying to do something that looks current. Ideally, some of the older things won't look dated, but, you know, you're trying to do work that's modern, that doesn't feel like it's of a time and you're not always successful at that. But the point is, film is a little bit more forgiving in terms of having to be uh, trendy, if you like. Well, you know, when you make a film title or you work on a film, it's going to be around like forever, as opposed to say, working on a commercial 30-second piece of advertising, it's here and it's now and it's gone. Yeah. So there's very different criteria in which it will be judged. Yeah. So you're thinking about the long term, like how is this going to age? The more likely you do something that's trending of the moment, the more likely you're going to look back and wish you never chose that typeface or went that direction. Let's get back to the whole modernist ideal. And I, I kind of look at this and we're in this room, I think, hopefully, and, and I'm not making too broad of a statement here, is somewhere along the way we've had somebody that was very instrumental in our careers, a great mentor. Um, and Kyle has had the whopper of mentors in uh, Mr. Paul Rand. Can you talk a little bit about what he was like as an influence for you, what you learned, and that experience? You talk about mentors. Um, I've tried to help people. It's, it's a pain, you know, it's, it's a pain to teach people sometimes. It takes a lot of patience and it's, um, it's hard to try to, you know, pull it out of people. But I try to do that because, you know, they sort of invested in me. And one of the things about a mentor is that you meet a person and you look at their work and you see what they do. They helped me understand what I was good at, maybe even more so than I understood what I was good at. Like Hugh Doubly, 
would tell me I was good at ideas, and he'd, he'd lock me in a room and say, we need a concept for this thing, and I'd have to come. And, and even Paul Rand, after, a, you know, after studying with him for a while, he kind of had to admit, you know, he, he used to think my work was, ugly. you know, he thought everybody's work was terrible. You know, once in a while there'd be somebody that he would, some Japanese woman, and I'm not being <laughs> sexist or, you know, but he, you know, because he, he had his dogma about women and he had his dogma about, you know, sometimes the Brits are good typographers and sometimes, but he thought some cultures weren't as good at design, America, you know, judging. Americans judging, were not good at design. As, as good as some other cultures, you know, and, he, and they all sort of prepared me and helped me understand what I wanted to do, and they kind of put that, they gave me that idea of wanting to go and study with Paul Wren, so when I got there, he came, and um, you know, he, he comes into the second year class, and he's got, they give him his powdered donuts, and he's got a lamp, and he sits there, and he's got his glasses, and he, they all bring up their work, and he has a reputation of being really hard on people, and uh, the first year students weren't supposed to go be in this master class with Paul Rand, and there was a guy also from Boston, this guy Bob Burns, who was my friend who studied under Lou Danzinger, and me and Bob were saying, we're, we're, go we're here to study with Paul Rand, we're gonna go to that master class, we're gonna sit in on that master class. Even though you're first year. Even though we're first year. And we got, went up there and we're sitting in the back, and all the second year students are all like, you know, what are they doing, and they're grumbling, you know, they're all grumbling, and, uh, they told us to leave, and he like looks up with his little glasses. Nah, let him stay. <laughs> <laughs> so he knew that we really wanted to. We were there to to try to study with him. So I just have to point something out. Paul Rand sounds a lot like Danny DeVito playing the Penguin, doesn't he? In, in the Batman <laughs> series. Yeah. What do you want, Batman? It probably does. He probably doesn't even sound like that. That's just the way that. <laughs> hey, Kyle. So he let you stay. You didn't follow. So he rules. let us stay in the master class, and then he let us do these tutorials, so we would go to his house in Weston, Connecticut, drive out there, and, you know, I shoveled his driveway, I, I you know. There's that was a, the tutorial, doing? I was an older guy, I, you know, we would do anything. You know, we would help him, like, figure out how to use his, you know, he had a mounting thing, and, he, and even he didn't have a Mac, and we were trying to help him learn how to use the Mac, but he didn't want to use the Mac, and uh, I was there when, uh, Steve Jobs, we uh, came. He he designed the next logo for Steve Jobs. He's like, yeah, I just showed him the logo. I showed him my book. He's like, the guy hugged me. <laughs> he says, and then you hear Steve Jobs talking about how you know how Paul Rand is such a great influence in his life. And I was like, I, I was I knew him before you knew him, but you know. <laughs> and so, but the idea of you know other people teachers helping you sort of understand, you know, identify what you're good at. Um, you know, you ha if you want to manage people, you really have to, you know, the, the one hard thing is to try to get everybody to work together and try to get people to recognize what their sort of job is or what their role is and, and, and bring out of them what they're good at. But he would like ask me a riddle, you know, he'd, he'd ask me like, okay, Kyle, I'm making a logo for a Japanese company called Okasan. What's my idea? Like I'd have to guess what his idea was, and I, and I, I knew what he was going to do, and I, I, I guessed his idea. At the time, we were probably not very good visually, you know, um, but I think he recognized that I had some ideas, and, uh, you know, and that's why we're there. We're there for him to teach us about form, and uh, he used to always talk about contrast. We'd show him something, and he'd be like, well, that's not contrast, you know, and, uh, trying to understand what he meant by contrast and thinking about contrast in a composition. And uh, also the idea of like a moment, you know, like um, a lot of his book covers is like a, it's like a freeze frame to me, even though, you know, he didn't have a lot of animation in some of his corporate logo presentation books that he would make. One of the things that I got from him was to try to make every frame, one frame at a time, beautiful and a lot of People have told me, well, that you know, motion graphics doesn't really work that way, but for me, it sort of does to try to get people or get myself to make every frame look good if you freeze on it. 
And he wasn't really dealing with sequence and story and sound, but he was. He was talking about those same kind of principles and looking at compositions that were uh, dynamic in that way. And I remember he said about Giselle, that Armin Hoffman poster, it's like a ballet, it's a, a Swiss poster. It's like, he said it's like a truck barreling down the road. Like he was saying it wasn't that graceful. He was saying that a lot of Armin's posters were very um, sort of static and stiff, and a lot of the Swiss posters were kind of stiff. When I was at Yale, I had Bradbury Thompson, I had Wolfgang Weingart, and maybe, I'm, maybe you guys are too young for some of those guys, but Herbert Matter used to teach there, and he died. If you don't know who Herbert Matter is, man, you should look at uh, it's fantastic work. You know, there's a woman named Inga Druckery that went to Basel, and the Basel guys were very much about refining the form of everything. And Armin Hoffman's like, you don't want to be a telephone designer. What are you going to be, a guy that you know, draws it on a napkin or phones it in? You're, that's what he meant by a telephone, oh, designer. telephone designer. You're like an art director, like you're phoning it in. I, in fact, our class was the first class to get Max. And in my opinion, everything that came out of Adobe Illustrator all looked the same. And Armin was all about like, you know, cutting out letter forms perfectly, you know, and then moving the letters around on a, you know, on a surface and then putting a piece of glass over it and, you know, making marks with a paintbrush and, and using your hands. And, and he, he, Armin would say, you know, you, you need to learn how to see and you need to work on your form. And uh, Paul Rand was like that too, you know, but he, Paul Wren used to say that an idea is only as good as its execution. It wasn't just having a concept, you had to have, you know, idea, and then he would say, you know, form can be an idea, so the idea can be all about what it looks like. Um, but I liked things that I would have a riddle and somebody would kind of get my riddle or ideally they would feel something, maybe they would laugh, um, but. Can you expand on that idea of a riddle? Well. If you have uh, two things and you combine the two things, you know, I had like George Washington with, you know, sunglasses on and it, which is an old idea, but it was to keep your valuables out of sight, like don't leave your, so it was the Yale safety thing. So what's the point? You have one thing that's a symbol that everybody recognizes. Uh, you know, maybe it's a metaphor, maybe it's a cliche and you, contextually juxtapose that with somebody else and that becomes a riddle because you say, I know what a dollar bill, George Washington etching for a dollar bill is, I get what sunglasses are like incognito, why did you combine those two things, A plus B doesn't equal AB, it equals a new idea and if you get my idea, you know, there's a thing about in Gestalt psychology that um, if I tell you a riddle, and you understand my riddle, then I've involved you in my creative process. And um, work that has a concept that people could understand and communicates, you know, and you sort of put it together and you get their idea, allegedly, according to Gestalt psychology, that was more memorable rather than something that was just um, a sort of decorative thing. I think there's a lot of beautiful work that's memorable just because it's beautiful, but it's, it was harder for me. You know, it was, it, it's, it's hard to make something that is memorable purely because it's just an amazing visual thing. And, and so all these, you know, there's, I, I always try to think about what the story is. I can't even have a concept unless I completely understand what the movie's about. You know, I have to read the script. I have to talk to the people involved. I believe in research, which doesn't mean just going online and pulling reference and cobbling together Photoshop things out of found reference. But I believe that you should immerse yourself in, in whatever it is that your, your job is and not necessarily, you know, uh, take your same sort of stylistic bag of tricks to every single job because it's not appropriate. I mean, Paul Rand was so good that he could make his own art. If Steve Jobs didn't like the next logo that he made, he wouldn't make another one. He wouldn't give, he wouldn't, it's not like, he wouldn't take notes. You know, like he made, you know, if, if you're Ford and you hire him to make the Ford logo, you pay him $100,000. And if you don't like the logo that, he, you know, he tells you, he makes a book and he, like I say, and he tells you why 
I tried this, I tried this, I tried this, I know you said this, so I did that, I went through them, and then at the end of the book, it's like, and this is why you should do this, and here's your prescription. And Henry Ford Jr. didn't think that the Ford logo was Victorian feeling and old, which was Paul Rehan's position. The new Ford logo that he made was awesome. I can, you know, you look it up, but uh, well, he still gets the 100,000. And I don't, I don't have that. <laughs> That's not the way it works with me, you know. Now, you, you were talking about so many different things there, and I tried to write some notes down, but it was impossible to keep up with you. Uh, if I can just recap a few things, and maybe this is a good opportunity for the audience to engage with us. Uh, but the first thing that we were talking about in terms of Paul Rand was that you were saying, like, he's a, he's a storyteller. That's what I heard. And if you guys haven't done this already, I strongly encourage you to go and look up some of these books. Now, we were able to have access to these books at Art Center, so I looked through his presentation of Ford and uh, something else. Maybe it was the next logo, where the way he arrives at his solution is pretty ingeniously laid out through a sequence of images. And, and that's what you're talking about. If you flip through it, it's almost kind of like an animation, a moment in time. And so when the client, looking at the book, goes to the last page, it's almost like as if there's nothing else to talk about. And this is it. And back in the day when you had these kind of designers who are at that superstar level. And on all those designers that you talked about, if you haven't heard of them before, you're gonna to wanna to check them out. And I think there's a book. So we're talking about the giants. And they were able to command uh, the kind of money that they were able to with the kind of respect because they had this relationship with the executives, with the CEO. It's not like the way it is today where there's a thousand, uh, no offense, but middlemen making the decision and everybody's just covering their butt. And so everybody's going to just second guess what their boss wants. And so that loss in design, I think we're all feeling it today. The farther or the further we move away from the decision makers, the more we become, unfortunately, order takers sometimes. And it's hard to kind of stand back and say, look, it's under K, this is the logo, that's it, and just walk away. A guy like Steve Jobs, who appreciated great design and respected Paul Rand, respected the entire process. And it worked out. Uh, but you were talking and the interesting about thing about Steve Jobs is I, I did a bunch of things for Apple. I shot a lot of things when he was speaking, like he would speak at Macworld. Like the keynotes? A, yeah. yeah. And I used to work at Apple. I, after um, Somewhere between my first and second year, Hugh called me and had me come out and, and work at Apple, and that was when Steve Jobs was asked to leave. But I met this woman, Marie Moore, that now has been there for 20-something years, and uh, it was in the beginning of prologue, I was um, doing projects with their animators. She asked me if I would take them through some of these jobs so that they could be, they could build that department. And so I had a bunch of Apple people like at my house and we're doing these things. And then, you know, I was getting paid, but I was, I knew that my job was to try to shepherd the, this team so they could go back and, and do it themselves. But so Marie gave me a bunch of jobs and it was after he bought Pixar and he was at Pixar, and I had to go to Pixar and present this sequence that we made. It was very trendy, and I kept mm. thinking, really, this is what he, like, kids on skateboards and all this, like, crazy MoGraph stuff, this is what he wants, really? And finally, I had to go show him the thing, and I, had, I only dealt with the middle management guys, and he was very upset that it wasn't, he's like, who the, you know, who told you to do this? And, 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 uh, and also, somebody like... Wait, I can't let you get away with just a description like that. You gotta give us the full, like paint the picture here. When he gets mad, what is it like? I, he was yelling at me. You know, he was upset. You know, they would say at Apple, um, you know, like, what's the temperature today? Like, what's his... <laughs> you know, what's, it wasn't frosty? What's Steve's temperature? <laughs> you know, is he gonna be mad or is he what? You know, he's a very well, passionate well, guy and... Uh, did he take but I was and, but, like throw it across the room? No, but he was he was like you know, swearing and um, and I was I, I, I'm not going to argue. I'm not going to say anything. I just wanted to leave though, and, I, and so I, I so I was like just taking notes. I'm like, <laughs> fuck you. <laughs> this, this fucking sucks. I'm like writing it down. I'm like, oh, okay. what am I going to do? I didn't disagree. That's a, like I, right. I, I I didn't disagree. Yeah. I'm like you you guys your guys told me that you wanted to have all these like this. Could is you what throw them under the bus? What's that? Could you throw them under the bus and say, look, I they with you. they got fired. Oh like, okay. I kind of like um, 
being a consultant sometimes. You know, I, I, there was, um, I'm trying to remember what, it was a marketing job, and there were a bunch of poster companies that make film posters, and they, they called me in just to look at these five presentation books with like a hundred posters Who's they? each. Zapple? A marketing, no, at a studio. Okay. Oh, a studio, I'm sorry. At a studio, they called me in to ask me what I thought about all these posters. That somebody else designed, not you? Yeah. Okay. And it was awesome because I was just, I just went through the whole thing and I was like, this is the best idea, but it doesn't look good. You should make it like this. And that's the poster that they used. For main titles, someone will call and maybe another company was working on it and something went wrong and they only have three weeks left and they call and say, you gotta, you gotta get this done for us. And I'm like, you know, you should have called me in the first place, but <laughs> don't worry, you know, we'll yeah. get it done. I, I, it makes you, it's like, I'm, you feel kind of, you know, like a big good. shot. Yeah. You're like uh, I got the, like you're like you're like you're Joe Pesci and uh, and, and um, what's the Pulp Fiction when he comes no, in? No, it's and, the Wolf. Yeah, uh, the Wolf. Harvey Keitel. Yeah, ha yeah, Harvey wolf. Keitel. That's right. It's, it's thirty minutes away. I'll be there in ten. You're Jimmy, right? This is your house. Sure is. I'm with the Wolf. That's Kyle. And show up. Show up and get the stuff done. You guys understand what Kyle is saying? That he likes being paid to just go tell people what's wrong with their work? <laughs> you guys understand that, right? That's pretty cool. And uh, It doesn't happen every day. No, it doesn't happen, but when it happens, you kind of rejoice. Every once in a while, I get that opportunity as well. My wife asked me, why were you there? I was like, I, I, I don't know why. Why did they pay me to be here? Just to tell them what's wrong. She goes, people pay you to do that? It's a good feeling, and you guys need to get into that space where people actually value your thoughts. I think contrast, you can talk about it in the sense of a composition, but also, you know, with regard to filmmaking and acting, uh, complex characters are interesting to me. You know, it isn't characters that are so, like, one-dimensional are, are, are not so interesting. I've had a lot of weird thoughts about that whole thing because if I was if I'm a, uh, a disciple of Paul Rand you know I said to Paul Rand once you know don't you like why don't don't you have like an assistant don't you have why don't you ever collaborate with anybody he's like I would but Jan Chico's dead if you, <laughs> Jan Chico is like one of the best typographers in history alleged you know and and his point is there's nobody good enough for me to to help me, you know? That's, that's gotta be hard to be around. Now you were saying this, like when he's talking about his contemporaries he thought weren't very good. What chance does a student have in terms of showing Mr. Rand work? I was from the North Shore of Boston. He was from Brooklyn. Bob was from Boston. We were like, uh, you know, your friends. I, I, I love the guy you know, and he could say anything to me just like my friends could tell me, you know, disparage you it's your you know you give each other shit right you know I'd be like you tell me if it sucked wouldn't you man you, wouldn't you Mr. Rand you tell me if it sucked hey, god damn right I tell you if it sucked if he came in for a pat on the back he came to the wrong place and there were a lot of people that would go in there and, and want to be validated and want him to you know celebrate how wonderful their work was and they and they would be hurt you know when he would find fault in it and you know I didn't care if he found fault. I was there to sit at his feet. And people would give me a hard time. You shoveled Paul, like they, you shoveled Paul Rand's driveway? Yeah, I shoveled Paul Rand's driveway and he gave me the uh, Albert North Whitehead poster with the A and the apple on the top. It's like already framed as I, you know, I was helping him in the garage. And I said, what are you gonna, uh, what are you gonna do with that? He said, ah, I don't know. And I said, can I put it in my car? He said, yeah, go ahead. <laughs> I have, if you want to see these, I mean, I have so many of, I have all those. I have They're the, your office, right? Yeah, I have yeah, the I limited, I have like so many books. I've, I've been to your office. If you haven't been to Kyle's office, he's got amazing posters and art and artifacts for movies all over. I'm like, God, how do you get that? Is that off eBay? Like, where do we get these things? No, he gave me. Right. He gave me the, you know, and then he came to our Greenberg because he wanted to see what, 
what Bob Greenberg was up to. Was, ah, I hear about this guy. What's going on? Is this we, in New York? This is in New York. I was working in our Greenberg. And he walked around, and Bob Greenberg gave him a tour. And uh, he's like, you know, it was all about technology and all about the CG department and the film optical department. And he's like, that guy's not a designer. <laughs> he says, <laughs> did he say it loudly? No, he, did, he said it to me like, well, Bob never really, you know, Bob was very creative, but he, he didn't really position himself at that time as like a creative director. Richard was more of a, you know, the designer, but the point is he was like, yeah, it's, all the, it's all machines. You know, what are all these, it's not, that's not design. You know, but he was very opinionated. But the, the reason I tell that story is Bob Greenberg was talking about the IBM poster. He said, Paul, I, I felt bad because I hadn't seen him in a long time, Paul ran, and, and, he, and he's like, you know, and I said, I don't have that one. And he's like, well, you can come to my, I'll give it to you if you come, come visit me. And I said, all right. And he's like, you're only coming because you want the poster. And I was like, I don't want it then. Forget it. You know? <laughs> so he had like an argument. But he gave it to me. But, well, I, I guess there's a certain generation, an era of designers and teachers who taught in a very absolute way. This is good. This is bad. You're trash. This is great. And I, I would think that you're kind of bridging that. And then there's the whole modern generation of everything is good. Everything is great. You know, everybody wins an award and a trophy. And now, where do you fit in that spectrum? Like, look inside yourself. Well, I haven't even explained like half the qu the other question that I was leading up to, but I keep going down these rabbit holes. <laughs> There's too many rabbit holes. So, what's the point? The <laughs> complex character thing, the kind of duality, the contrast is: I'm a designer. I have to do everything myself. I have to have everybody know that I did everything myself. It has to be my idea. I have to execute it. I'm a business person. I have three weeks to do this. I got five of these things I have to do. You know, somebody, a producer said to me early on at RGALA, you know, you have so many things that you want to do. You, you need to ask, you know, you, you can't do everything yourself. You, you need to, uh, and I'm listening to Paul Rand saying, you know, you got to keep your hand in it, brother. And so it's like, we were trying to direct typography like if it was a feature, you know, does Steven Spielberg have to do everything himself? I don't know, I mean, you know, we tried to make these complex title sequences that weren't as simple as some of the ones that were being done. To kind of try to tie this together a little bit, you had said one very early on, like the power of the teacher is the teacher is able to look at you and tell you what your strengths are. And I'm a big believer in going in all in on your strengths and not trying to do everything. Because, you know, you could probably design the logo or do the Photoshop work or do animation, but then you're not great at it. And what they told you early on is you're good at coming up with the ideas. And so if you focus on that, there's a long career, and especially you get to the top of the mountain, and people now just call you for your opinion and your ideas. That's a great place to be. Since you brought it up, i got to tell you guys this little story about the island of Dr. Moreau. Uh, Kyle gave me my first start in motion design. And he hired me to do a storyboard. He's like, hey, you want to do a storyboard? And I'm like, great, yeah, let's do it. I didn't even know what a storyboard was. I didn't tell him that, obviously. And so he hired me. <laughs> and he's like, when can I see it? I'm going to call you in four hours. Like, ah, four hours? Like, go on the internet, what is storyboard? You know, that kind of thing. But the island of Dr. Moreau, Kyle was in a post session working on another job we were helping him out with, which was for Taco Bell. Taco Bell. There's nothing ordinary, nothing ordinary about, about it. it. <clears throat> I go and meet Kyle. I'm driving from downtown into Hollywood. And Didn't I, I meet you before? Yeah, we met before. I don't want to tell that story. But, right. uh, so I'm, I'm driving out, and I get in. It's a big, this is the back in the day when the, the uh, Henry operator, flame operator, they had these huge suites, and they, like, everybody catered to them. It's $1,000 an hour, an hour, okay, going into these bays. And I was sitting there, so Kyle's like, hey, i got to talk to the operator. I'm like, okay, so I'm sitting on the couch. Kyle's sitting there talking to this guy who's like a superstar. He shows them the work, and it plays on the screen like this. And I had done the storyboards for it, some keyframes, and it wasn't good. And the tension in the room was so thick, I got to tell you. What wasn't nothing? good? What, what you did The was animation good. that this guy was doing oh. was not good. Oh. And, and I was like, how is Kyle going to talk about this? This is like, I'm just like freshly graduated from school. I'm, we're a couple of months out of school. It's like, how is he going to talk about this? I got to tell you. Uh, in the spirit of Paul Rand, he did not mince words. 
He did not mince words, and I'll leave it like that. Cal doesn't remember it, but I remember it, because I'm this like 20-year-old kid, like, oh, this is super intense. I, it's not even my work, and I'm sweating bullets in the background. So then he's like, show me the logo. Show me what you did for Moreau. Like, okay, let me get the envelope on. It's like, Dude, here you go. And then Kyle looks at it. It's like, good, I like it. It's like, that's it? There's no changes? It's like, no, no, we'll talk later. So I walked out of the room. So, you know, there's the whole dynamic there. This is like, we have a lot of shared history together. Kyle's wife is one of my best friends from school. So I just wanted to show that a little bit in terms of giving you guys context. There's a lot of things we're referring to that some of you guys that are so young, like Kyle's been designing main titles longer than you've been alive. You guys over there and you two over there, you know who you are. The beer drinking, spilling, knocking kids. Those people, right? So, Take it easy. Now, I had all what these- was it? What did I say to the operator? I was Do you really want me to tell that story? Yeah. Okay, yeah. you guys, here you go. All right, we're gonna pull back the veneer and we're gonna get rid of being PC and we're gonna just let it out. I will tell you because my memory isn't good I have for no names. I have no right, recollection. I, I, I remember what the... he said, it was horrible. He looks at that and he's like, is that good? The guy's like, um, uh, yeah. He goes, show me one frame that you've done that's good. <laughs> and he's scrubbing through. And he doesn't know where to park. He's just scrubbing through the whole thing. Because we all knew it was not good. And then he pulls me into the conversation. Chris, show me your frames. It's like, OK, that's good. Why isn't this good? Which frame here did you do that was good? And he said it kind of in that tone. And the guy's like, poor guy. I was like, oh my god, what's he going to say? He's like, look, man, look, I'm just hands here. I'm just hands, meaning I'm just moving the things that you tell me to do. And Kyle's like, you mean I'm paying you that much to be hands? Come on. I didn't say that. You did. You said all of this. <laughs> it was horrible. OK, I'm a 21-year-old kid straight out of school. I didn't know what story words are. I'm just making stuff. You know, As long as he doesn't yell at me, I'm OK. It's like Mr. Rand, Mr. Cooper. It's like, is that all right? So this is what's going on in the room. And a couple years, not a couple years, like later on, I see it on TV. It all looks beautiful. It's amazing. I'm like, ah, oh, that was a rough session. He's like, what, what was rough? <laughs> Really? You can see it left some emotional scarring on me just that moment. That's what was said. And I have more stories like that if that's what you want to hear. Yes. All right? Do we really want to dig it all out, Kyle? No, that's, I mean, that's, that, people have said that, that I used to, like, there's a guy drawing. Uh, you, excuse me. What, are you so that I still do it? No, I don't know. The internet, no, I'm just kidding. Do you think this is good? So this is good. <laughs> So you like, you like this? You like what you <laughs> So yeah, there's tons of stories like that. Obviously, if you've been around this man. He knows what he wants. He knows what he doesn't want, uh, except for when you're working with him at that moment in time. Because I remember showing you that very first thing you asked me to do, a storyboard for, uh, for Celtic Pride. And I didn't know what boards were. I, I thought a storyboard would just put something together so it looks like time has moved. And I'm getting on the phone. Kyle's like, send it to me. I was like, oh, so stressful. Just send him the work. We're talking about four hours into starting the project, getting the brief, sending it over like, I don't know what kind of modem we had at that point. I know, you guys deal with it. And then Kyle called me up and he's like, what is this? You know, there's a little pattern here. It's like, uh, it's the storyboard. It's like, that's not an idea. I'm like, uh, okay, work on it. <laughs> All right, that was the art direction of that time. That's a telephone designer. That like, was, it wasn't uh, good. But I thought that was somewhere. good. I like Well, we finally got there. You know, after I like cried and uh, you know did all I needed to do. I was. You know, uh, I said to my myself, wife, "I'm like, let me figure it out." My wife went to Art Center, and I said, "Who's the best designer in your class at Art Center?" We got to. I need some. And it was him. He was the. Uh, She's very kind. She really is. So Kim calls me. He's like, Chris, you, you got to meet my boyfriend. And Kim's a beautiful woman, so I'm like, okay, what boyfriend is this? What's going on? So come and meet my boyfriend. You guys are going to get along really well. He designed that title. Uh, I'm like, which one? Uh, seven? I'm like, no way. Not that guy. Some guy told you a story because, you know, to impress you. You know how guys are. Tall tales and all. I'm like, all right, well, whatever. So I drive out to Hollywood. And this is uh, next to the, the Cat and the Fiddle back in Hollywood where you guys were. And I come in, and I wait there, and there's a beautiful spiral staircase. 
and there's a receptionist, and she comes down and says, like, Kyle's in a meeting. He's asking if you can wait. I'm like, okay. Like, I'm a kid from school, I'll wait. And like 30 minutes goes by, 45 minutes goes by. I'm like, God, dude, who does this guy think he is? I don't even know if I'm in the right place. She comes down, she's like, really sorry, the meeting's gone on longer than, but he'll, he promises he'll be right there. So now we're like an hour waiting for a meeting. She's like, let's go upstairs. She takes me upstairs, and I walk past all these movie posters, and I start to feel like, okay, maybe I'm in the right place. And then there's this giant film projector, enormous, and I'm in this gigantic conference room, and nobody's there. I sit there, and it's still no Kyle. But now I'm like deep into it. Now I gotta see this through. And it's late at night. I have no idea what time it is, but it's late at night. Finally, Kyle comes in. I've got my little portfolio case, you know, the attache, kind of like how you used to do it, laminated prints and all that stuff. He's like, let me see your work. I open the case, takes out, like I have a stack, like, you know, 20 pieces. Kyle's like, one, two, three. Okay, that's enough, thanks. I was like, what? I don't know. Something must have been going on. It must have been a bad... You're not, like, <laughs> no, no, factoring all, in. Look, we're still friends, right? So it all worked You're out. You're not factoring fine. in the other, the crazy Joel Silvers. Or some, <laughs> some angry producers yelling at me about something. So I go away, and I was like, I'm a young, entitled kid, cocky, whatever. It's just like, what? That's it? Oh, man. And so I go home. But the next day, I was like, you want to work on this main title? So I always tell uh, young people, students alike, whatever, professionals even, that it isn't really about what you want. When the person knows what they want, they just say enough. So there's, a, there's such a thing as going past the sale. Now we're going to bring a little business into the conversation. Going past the sale, you guys are familiar with this term? Going past the sale? Imagine in that room if Kyle's like, one, two, three, four, I'm done. I'm like, oh, no, no, hold on. You need to Let see pieces Let me explain what I was thinking about this. Don't you one. want to see this process book? And, put it down on the table, what's he gonna think now? What, what else do I have to gain from that situation? He's just gonna look at it and it's like, oh, I saw good things, but then all of a sudden it got really thin in the middle and it got even worse. Never mind, I'm never gonna call you again. That's when if you have yes, you need to stop at yes. You know how you guys are? You ever get into an argument with your wife, your girlfriend, your, your boyfriend, whatever, and they're like, you're right, I'm sorry. And you just keep going. And then after a while, it's like, no, F you, I, I wasn't sorry, and you're, you're a terrible human being. That was one of those situations where you just have to accept that he knows what he wants, and he said enough. The next day, I literally got the job, and that's how I began this whole motion career. I had a, we were working on the DreamWorks logo redesign, and I was with Richard Greenberg, and we had a meeting with Steven Spielberg, and when was that? I mean, when did DreamWorks come out? It must have been, you know, it's a long time 1997 ago. or something, right? I, so I had all these on foam core, you know, 70 logos, variations of the DreamWorks thing. And I sit down and I say, okay, so this one is like, and he goes, I do this all the time. <laughs>